Hello everyone and welcome back again to the Linear Algebra component of the Calculus and Linear Algebra series. In the last video I introduced this idea of the nth roots of complex numbers and I also talked about roots of unity and we showed how to find the nth roots of complex numbers and we found that in fact there are n many uh, roots to complex numbers. And in this video what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to solve quadratic complex polynomials. So moving over to the tablet, um, we can title this maybe a uh, Let's say quadratic uh, quadratic complex polynomials. So these are much like the polynomials that you've seen uh, before of the form like ax squared plus bx plus c, but we're now taking them where we've got complex coefficients. So uh, that is a polynomial. of the form and we'll write it in the usual way of kind of but instead now with z's to mean that these things can take uh, values in the complex numbers a z squared plus b z plus c equals zero and a b and c are in c now not necessarily r well we can just use the standard quadratic formula in fact to solve this the same factorization principles hold that you can do uh, you can complete the square and derive the quadratic formula for this uh, so the solutions So this equation are given by uh, in this situation it's going to be z is equal to negative b divided by 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a again and we're going to write this as minus b over 2a plus or minus w over 2a where w here if I square it by definition that is b squared minus 4ac and recall that a b and c here are still complex numbers so this thing on the right hand side is a complex number in other words we've got a kind of square root of a complex number in order to find what the value of w is and we know how to do that because we've talked about how to find nth roots of complex numbers so finding square roots is just a, a particular case when n equals 2. Okay, so that seems fairly simple. We can solve our uh, complex equations or our complex quadratics in that way. So let's actually just do it. Let's just do an example and see if we can actually solve one. So what's our example? Uh, we're going to take the one that we've got in the notes here, which says uh, let z squared minus 2 plus 2i times z plus 3i equals 0. So what we'll do is we'll start off by writing out what w squared is. We'll find w out, and then we can just substitute it into our kind of formula up here. Once we know what w is, then we're pretty much done. So uh, then, if I can shift this over a little bit. w squared is equal to what? It's defined to be b squared minus 4ac. So what is b squared? Well, that's this whole thing here squared. I can take that minus sign out because uh, when I square a negative number, it's positive. So I just get 2 plus 2i all squared. And then I get minus 4 times by a, which is 1, times by c, which is 3i. So I get 3i. Squaring this thing here, I see that I get what? I get 2, uh, sorry, 4. So 2 times 2. Uh, minus, I get the... 2i times other 2i, which is 4 again, so I get minus 4, plus 4i plus 4i, which is 8i, and I get minus 12i. So the 4s clearly cancel, and then I'm just left off with an overall uh, factor of minus 4i here. Yes, okay. So writing w squared as, well, we can write it in the exponential form, and we can immediately write it as w squared is equal to 4e to the minus pi over 2 times i. right? And we can think about that because we can just think kind of doodling our argon diagram or our complex plane over here in the corner. Imaginary, this is real. Uh, our point here is somewhere down here, right? It's four units down. 
and we can see immediately that the angle that it makes here going clockwise is pi over 2 so in other words its argument is minus pi over 2 which is this piece here and its modulus is 4 because it's 4 away from the origin so that's why we have that this thing is 4. Hence we can put it into our equation before so we, what do we have that the solutions are w is going to equal well yeah okay we can write that w is going to be an element of because we're going to take it as a set so uh, let's let's change that to an element of w is going to be in the element uh, the set of elements where we've got here the square root of 4 which is 2 and the first one we've got is e to the minus pi over 2 times i and then the next one is again going to be 2 and then we're going to have e to the minus pi over 2 uh, uh, sorry, this is pi over 4, because we've taken the square root. We've got pi over 2 times i. Plus 2 pi, all divided by 2. Which comes from our previous formula. Which we can write that set as 2e to the minus pi over 4i. And then we've got 2. Here we've got the minus pi over 2 plus 2 pi, which is going to be... Uh, 3 over 2 pi so in other words the overall thing is e to the 3 pi i over 4 so our two values of w are this value and this value here okay so just to reiterate that point again we've got here w squared is equal to this if we square root this thing we get uh, the square root of 4 which is our 2 and then we have to take the square root into this uh, power here which is why we got our factor of 4 and then we had this other case for when we had the, the for when k was zero and k was one in our solution set for our, our nth roots. That's why we got this other solution. So those are our two values of w, and then we can just substitute it into our uh, quadratic equation now. So what does that tell us? That tells us that z is equal to um, two plus two i, because that's our value for b, uh, or at least negative b. Plus or minus our values for um, w, which in this situation we can write as root 2, 1 minus i, all divided by 2. So I've written this in the notes uh, because all I've done here is written this back in Cartesian form. And you can see how to do that. You can do that by simply uh, sub writing it in polar form and then substituting in uh, theta is minus pi over 4 and theta is 3 pi over 4. And then just doing some simple simplifications, we can write that as 1 plus or minus 1 over root 2 plus i times 1 with the flipped version of uh, the plus or minus. So this is exactly our set of solutions to this polynomial equation that we wrote up here. And all we did is we just used the nth roots formula and the quadratic formula that you know rather well from uh, from school. So that's where we're going to finish. And that's pretty much all the stuff to talk about with complex numbers. And what we're going to talk about next time uh, is we're going to go into a new topic. We're actually going to start talking about linear algebra finally. We're actually going to talk about vectors. Uh, I'm going to talk about things like dot products and cross products and many other exotic things in linear algebra. So as always, I remind you to read the notes. Uh, after watching this video and attempt any problems in the module handbook pertaining to the material that was discussed here. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.